Project 31 is Crawler. I assembled the crawler using the instructions near the beginning of this manual, and then I hooked it up to this circuit using the jumper wires. As you can see, I have the geared motor attached to it, and with the slide switch on and the switcher toward me, the crawler will move forward slowly. The crawler has a face on the front of it, so you know which direction is which, which end is which. And then you can see that the crawler moves very slowly along the ground like a real insect. And it may remind you of an actual insect like a, an ant, a beetle, or a spider. And then I'm going to move the s switcher on the other setting and now the crawler moves backwards towards me. It's important that when using it that you make sure that the wires do not get entangled in the motor or gears or and that the crawler does not overextend or fall off the table if you're using it on one. You'll make it go forward again. So it's good to keep a close eye on the crawler so that nothing goes wrong. Now, the crawler has a control light on the circuit that controls it. When I turn on the slide switch and move the switcher towards me, the crawler will move forward and the control light is yellow. Yellow indicates that it is moving forward. However, when I move the switcher away from me, the bicolor LED is now red, indicating that the crawler is moving backwards. Some toy remote control cars may have a control light that changes, or some machines even have control lights that change colors when they are moving in different directions, whether forward or reverse. Forward, backward. I added a second set of batteries to the circuit controlling the crawler, and now when I move the switcher toward me or away from me, the crawler moves a lot faster than it did in the preceding two circuits because now there is twice the amount of power to run it than there was before. The principle is the same, it's just the speed and power that the crawler has. A faster bug that is moving. But, and for this circuit especially, you need to be careful that you don't overextend the wires if you're operating the crawler on a table that does not fall off and make sure that the wires do not get caught in any of the uh, mechanisms on the motor or the crawler. I mounted a battery holder and the switcher on board the crawler, attaching them to the motor so that I can now control it from the crawler itself. Moving the switch to the left makes the crawler go forward. Now it does not work as well on carpet as it would on a hard surface like a wooden floor. But when I move the slide switch the switcher to the right, the crawler moves backwards. And it's much easier to control now and you don't have to worry about ex overextending the wires but it's much more easy for them to get caught in the gears or other parts of the motor, so, or legs of the crawler, so be careful. I attach the color LED directly across the ends of the jumper wires connected to the battery holder. And when I insert both batteries, the color LED will be on and flashing. And it re directly receives its power from the battery, so it will be on and flashing even if the crawler itself is off. But then I can let it move forward or backwards, and it will keep on flashing. So it may be a little bit easier to see it in the dark. But be careful of the flashing LED, because it may trigger seizures in people who have epilepsy or other medical conditions. I'm going to turn on the slide switch and then 
make the crawler move forward. It can move backwards too, but you will see that the bicolor LED blends every so often. That is because the vibration switch attached to the crawler will complete the circuit that the bicolor LED is included in when the contacts in there are closed. Same thing if the crawler moves backwards. The direction the crawler is moving does not interfere with the performance of the vibration switch. Just as long as there is enough motion for it to activate the bicolor LED. The effect would probably be best in a dark room. I'm going to turn on the slide switch and the mode the, the merry-go-round will spin briefly and then when I lift the circuit and move it in a certain direction either the merry-go-round will spin or the light fan will spin. You'll notice that when I tilt it to the left the light fan spins and when I tilt it to the right the merry-go-round spins and place figures on the merry-go-round if desired. I'm going to turn on the slide switch and when I tilt the circuit a certain way an alarm will sound. The tilt switch activates the alarm when the ball inside of it closes the contact to complete the circuit. Now for the second part of this project, I'm going to move the three snap wire down here between points C and D and it will be sensitive to tilt in different directions than before. Now, if you were to place a three snap wire between points A and B as well as C and D, the circuit may be so sensitive that the tilt that the alarm could be difficult to turn off. Right now it doesn't seem that way, but you may notice that it sounds more when I tilt it from many different directions, unlike the previous two times. Project 39 is alarm sounds and lights. When I turn on the slide switch, an alarm sounds and a light comes on. Right now the siren sounds like a police car siren, but when I add a connection to points D and E, the alarm now sounds like a machine gun. When I remove the connection between D and E, and then add a connection between points B and D, the siren now sounds like a fire engine. Lastly, when I move the connection so that it is between points B and F, the siren sounds like a European siren, or an ambulance siren, you could say. And now you can remove all these connections and move the wire over to points A and B and see what it will sound like now. Now it sounds like a fire engine siren again.